In this video, I want to talk mostly about turning, uh, which is my favorite technique for catching waves on the downwind. Um, so there's uh, a bunch of technical terms um, for downwind kinetics. Uh, and, uh, these are also sometimes for the upwind. Uh, pumping, rocking, ooching, flicking. Um, we don't get a lot of fanning or sculling uh, on the downwind. Uh, so pumping, we use pumping, um, loosely. We often say pumping when we, when we mean rocking and rolling. Um, but technically, uh, pumping is just when you pull your sail in. Um, then also ooching gets a fair amount of attention. So that's when you, you sort of jerk the boat forward. You move forward and suddenly stop. Um... Uh, but ooching is not, it's less effective than, than pumping. Um, cause you can sort of imagine if you move forward and stop suddenly, like momentum is conserved. Uh, the only reason that that would help you would be if it was just at the critical point of a wave and then you ooched forward and sort of seesawed, like just tipped over that critical point. Uh, because then if you have to move back, um, after your ooch, um, uh, it doesn't matter because you're already surfing. Um, so pumping is a little bit like that in that if you pump at the wrong time, it's not actually beneficial because you've reduced some of the flow on your sail and your sail has to go back out before it starts working at a hundred percent again. So you really need to be careful about exactly when you pump. Maybe a rough guide, um, I mean, pump when you're about to catch a wave, but even then, you want to pump when your sail is most loaded up. Um, so pumping is actually, there's a lot of wave conditions where you barely pump at all. Um, it's just so much more effective to do nice rolls and to sheet properly as you turn and roll. Um... Then I, I guess flicking is is maybe, uh, um, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about negative pumping too. Uh, so pumping is when you pull the sail, uh, when you, when you uh, pull the sail in. Negative pumping um, is when you let the sail out and stop it suddenly. Um, so when you stop it suddenly, the leech flicks. Um, and that is uh, not counted as a pump. Uh, so uh, uh, you're allowed uh, one pump per wave um, to try to catch that wave. Um, sometimes you can get away with more than one, uh, but, uh, the focus is on one pump per wave. Uh, and if you have to do more than one, you're doing it wrong. Uh, right. Cause you can imagine that, uh, you pump and then you'd have to have a backswing and then pump again. Um, although I hear that Marit is doing something with double pumping. Um, I haven't seen the technique, so, uh, I could eat those words, but uh, keeping it simple, um, one pump only if it's necessary um, and focus on trying to rock legally, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, yes, so uh, when, maybe right now, when you're, uh, when the jury is looking downwind, um, they, they look for boats uh, that are just rocking back and forth and back and forth without turning. Uh, that's not allowed. Um, the reason that you're allowed to rock sometimes is to facilitate steering. Uh, so when you, uh, so let's say this boat is, is fairly balanced. Um, so the water is at, is at this angle. So this boat's slightly heeled to windward. So the pressure in the sail um, is over top of the resistance in the, in the hull of the boat. Um, so then if you lean the boat this way, the boat wants to turn that way. And if you lean the boat further this way, then it wants to turn that way. Um, I should also mention that when you get going fast, you want to flatten that boat out to use the planing surface at the back of the hull. <laughs> this is not a laser, clearly, because the back of the hull is very round. A laser has is, is very round at the front. Again, it doesn't look like that. Uh, but the back is, is quite flat, so you can, uh, you can get a nice planing surface when you go fast. Um, so you don't really want to try to plane on the, on the sharp corner side of, of your boat. Um, so 
that's the exception to to sailing downwind with the the pressure uh, over top of the the resistance in the hull. Um, Yes, so so you unbalance uh, the boat to turn, and then you rebalance the boat. Uh, so when you unbalance the boat, that can be passive. So for example, you can let the sail out a little too far, which causes the boat to rock to windward, which causes the boat to turn, and then you can flatten and sheet the sail back in on that new angle and get a big acceleration from it. Um, so the initiation of the turn is often more, more passive. It doesn't have to be. Um, you can also see the, the person leaning out hard to rock the boat to windward, uh, for example, uh, or very obviously standing up on the leeward side of the boat to get it to heel to leeward to initiate the turn and then the final uh, aggressive flatten at the end. Um, uh, but when you are initiating turns aggressively, uh, you just want to be more aware of what the jury, um, more aware that you're you're abiding by the rules perfectly. Um, uh, whereas if you initiate the turn more passively, um, you uh, are less likely to attract um, the jury. Um, yes, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the different types of turn. Uh, one helpful way of separating them out, um, helpful for me at least, has been to divide them into upturns and downturns. Um, but this itself has become fr uh, frustrating, I think, for a lot of people that I've been coaching because, uh, as you can see, uh, an upturn can refer to a lot of things. Um, uh, so I want to try to break this down uh, just so you can think, you know, waves are incredibly complicated. I did another little video about uh, different factors uh, for different types of waves. So you want to have different turns available so that either you're turning on to by the lee or you're turning on to a reach. Um, uh, and I've, I've uh, adapted, um, so in Sweden, uh, by the lee, uh, there's a much easier way of saying it. Uh, sailing negative um, is how, how you would say sailing by the lee. So um, I've adapted that nomenclature here. So negative meaning sailing by the lee. Double negative meaning sailing very hard by the lee. Double positive meaning sailing on a higher reach. Um, I like to call it a hotter reach. Um, Yes, anyway, so um, two fairly obvious types of turns, um, upturns and downturns. So uh, sailing, you're sailing along negative, so the wind's coming from the camera. Um, you heel to leeward, uh, the boat starts to turn, and then uh, the flow reverses from negative flow to positive flow as you turn. Um, so that would be a big upturn, uh, going all the way from negative flow to positive flow. And then, of course, downturn, you could have the opposite. Um, but the, the, the trick for the, for the big upturn is that when you turn really far, if it's not very windy, the temptation is to over flatten, uh, which is only okay if you're turning, if there's very tight waves and you're turning all the way to uh, a new downturn. Um, uh, so on the upturn, you might have to really lean in to get that, that initiation of the upturn and then not actually lean out very hard to flatten and get that acceleration and then finish with a balanced fast boat. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk about downturn separately. So uh, then another, another situation could be, um, so I, I didn't want to say that you you would go from uh, negative to zero um, uh, because you should never sail straight downwind unless there's a good exception reason to. Um, so one exception would be you're sailing negative and the waves um, are coming from the camera down to the whiteboard and then you catch one of these waves and it could take you straight downwind. Um, but again, as soon as you've caught that wave, you're going to turn away from a dead downwind. Um, so you could go from negative to whatever angle um, surfing is. Uh, that could also be to positive. Um, so then the other uh, upturn uh, that I um, 
have been calling a small upturn uh, is where you don't actually reverse the flow of air on the sail. Um, when you reverse the flow of air on the sail, uh, it's hard to get it back in the new direction, um, which is makes sense, but um, because you have to go all the way from flowing one way to flowing the other way. Um, but we don't often think about it. We think, I'm going to turn and catch this wave. Um, uh, so it can be very effective to do a smaller turn from very hard, well, you don't want to go very hard by the lee, but from hard by the lee to almost downwind, but still with good flow on the sail. Um, so you can go sailing, you know, you've got that big pressure in the sail, and then the wave ro rolls under, and then you pull against that pressure and catch the wave. You don't have to turn uh, to positive, lose the flow, and regain the flow again. You can catch that uh, and then go downwind. And then once you've caught the, the, the wave, then maybe you go even, you go further by the lee again, or maybe then you decide to, to reverse the flow on the sail. But I just want it to be re uh, really clear that when you're doing your turns, upturns or downturns, you don't need to reverse the flow on the sail. You can just go from far away from the wind, which would be very negative, very by the lee, or, um, uh, on a hotter reach or a tighter reach, uh, n not a tight reach towards the camera, but a, a, a reach that is more towards half wind, more towards a beam reach. Uh, so the further away from downwind you go, the more you can use your apparent wind. Uh, so you get a lot of pressure out of the sail. Um, and then you can turn downwind and you don't have to turn all the way uh, to reverse the flow. Um, then technically there is also another, another way. So let's say you're sailing on, um, a, uh, with positive flow on the sail, you're sailing on a broad reach. Um, then you could do an upturn, uh, where you turn even further away from downwind. Maybe this would happen on a skewed course, or maybe this happens if there's big, fast waves, uh, coming sort of from this side of the uh, whiteboard to that side of the whiteboard. Uh, and your best way of catching them is to, to go from slightly positive flow on the sail to very positive flow on the sail. Um, because when you tried it going negative, uh, you jibed, for example. Um, so the thing is that when you, when you rock and then get uh, turned... Uh, flat and get that acceleration uh, and uh, that speed is now turning really across the course instead of where you want to go which is downwind so I'm, I'm saying this isn't just a two-step process it's not very good to practice going from positive to very positive and then just sailing away from the mark you want to go positive to very positive to the wave um, so maybe you're going almost downwind Heel to leeward a little bit, roll, turn the boat, flatten, catch the wave, and then turn uh, in the direction of the wave um, immediately. Uh, so hopefully this is now uh, a little bit more logical, a little bit more of a review, uh, thinking about it for downturns. Um, so if you're uh, sailing with positive uh, flow on the sail on a broad reach, uh, then you could heel hard to windward, uh, pressure in the sail comes to this side of the boat, um, have to let the sail out um, like quite aggressively. If you only half let the sail out, then it's almost like your leech is luffing. You don't get a lot of power in the sail when you flatten the boat. Uh, but if you let the sail out a little bit too much, when you flatten, the leech presses out and you get a lot of good flow on the sail. And you can trim it back in. You can pull the sail back in to keep it from being too far out. And that pull is also a really powerful acceleration. Um, so that big downturn can be, uh, can be a really nice move to catch a wave. Uh, and then, uh, just as we said, be, said before on the other side, you could be sailing positive uh, and, and the waves could be going straight downwind. Uh, so you could do this, um, this roll to windward, catch the wave, and then go straight downwind until you've caught the wave. And then once you're, you've committed to catching that wave, then don't keep going straight downwind, turn one way or the other. Um, so 
from positive to whatever the wave direction is. Um, and uh, um, that, let's skip to the bottom one. So that could also be um, uh, like a small upturn. Um, sorry, we're doing downturns. Uh, so from very negative uh, to slightly negative. Um, I think that would be up. Uh, oh, yes. Um, from slightly negative to very negative, you catch the wave, um, and then, and then you turn in the wave's direction, because you don't want to keep on sailing with this ridiculous, uh, super far by the lee. The boat is not very efficient when it's super far by the lee. So, you can get it going fast by going far by the lee, but you're really fighting forces and you're not making, making ground downwind, and you're in danger of an accidental jibe. So, Sometimes if you go from, from slightly negative, like just by the lee, to very by the lee, it might be better to, to, to jibe and do it um, with positive flow on the sail. Um, but yeah, so coming back to this one, uh, really uh, important to remember that you don't have to invert the flow on the sail. So if you're on a hot reach, you're going really fast sideways across the wind, Maybe the course is skewed. Maybe this makes sense for some other reason. Maybe you're sailing away from other boats, whatever. Um, uh, then you can get really going really fast. And then maybe you can catch a wave. You can turn downwind and catch a wave um, and, uh, and not go by the lee. Just turning downwind and catching the wave, gaining speed, re-trimming your sail again and sailing uh, properly again. So these small upturns and small uh, small downturns are really powerful. Um, the only trick with them is that they are a little less legal or it's a little easier to cheat with them. It's very obvious to the jury what you're doing when you go from positive flow all the way to negative flow with a nice rocking turn. Um, they can see the boat rocks, they can see the boat turns, they can see the tiller follows the turn, flat, the boat flattens, and then the boat goes straight. That's very legal, that's obvious. But if you're doing these smaller turns where you're going from really far by the lee and then you catch a wave and then you're just going a little bit by the lee sometimes you can have a big rock uh for a fairly small turn and that starts to attract the jury's attention but um if you catch the way so after the jury has has verified that you're not just rocking backwards and forwards they're supposed to come alongside the boat and see whether what you're doing catches waves if you catch a wave um then that's more a lot more legal. Like it's still possible to cheat to catch a wave, but if you do some kinetics to catch a wave, um, they basically say, "Oh, okay, then that was legitimate." So if you're going, if they're if they're um, they're looking at you from the side here, uh, and you're sailing hard by the lee, and you catch this wave, and you turn a little bit less by the lee, but there is a fairly fairly big rock. Um, uh, but then they see, you know, your transom lift up and your boat accelerate forwards. Um, then that's that's much more legal. Um, yes. So uh, let's talk about what you do uh, when you've lost a wave. Because, um, uh, yeah, it can be hard to catch a wave in some, some sailing conditions, but it's not hard to lose a wave. Um, so, and by lose a wave, I basically mean going slow. Uh, so anytime your boat is pointed uphill, um, instead of downhill. So, uh, um, if you're normally sailing, sailing like this, uh, and you know, the waves catch you and the waves catch you, uh, if you end up like this, uh, with the boat, with the bow pointing uphill, um, you have to turn. It's like very urgent. Um, there's no way you can sail properly, uh, while going upwind. And... Turning is a way of accelerating, right? You roll um, uh, and then you flatten uh, and the flattening uh, accelerates the boat. So um, as soon as you are no longer able to stay on the wave, as soon as possible, you need to recognize it. So the earlier you can act on, uh, the earlier you can recognize that you've lost a wave, turn and trim properly, um, 
the more likely you are to be able to salvage the last of the speed uh, from the wave um, to catch the next one. Um, but anyway, so let's just talk, let's think about uh, if the waves are faster than the wind and it's very hard to catch them. So maybe you try sometimes and don't succeed and you succeed other times. So let's say you've just lost a wave. You realize that this is now a hopeless wave. You turn, so you have to decide whether you want to turn uh, further by the lee um, or further uh, positive um, or if you want to do a big turn to change the flow on your sail. So you have to decide what kind of turn is going to get you going as fast as the wave because um, you can only catch a wave if you're going as fast as it, um, pretty much. There may be exceptions to that. Um, and of course, when you turn, you have to trim. Like the... Obviously, any time you turn the boat, you have to change, um, like the flow of air on the sail changes. So you almost always need to adjust the angle of your sail. Sometimes the sail's twisting for you or whatever. Um, but you have to think of the, the, the change in apparent wind, the change in angle. So you change in speed and angle and, and make sure the sail uh, starts to work. Because you won't catch the next wave if your sail's slightly stalled. Um, and obviously not if it's, if it's luffing too. Um, so as soon as you've lost the wave, it's turning and trimming. Um, but because we're focused on the wave, we often forget to look. Um, so you need to you need to turn and uh, trim the sail and then look around. Um, so uh, going back to another video that I um, that I recently made, uh, um, it depends where are you catching the waves from? Are they coming from diagonally behind you? Are they coming from diagonally in front of you? Um, how fast are the waves going? Anyway, so look for your next wave. Um, or if it's really hopeless and it's it's hard to catch waves right now, maybe you're looking for your next opportunity, right? Look for a different, bigger wave um, packet or look for a gust of wind that would let you start catching waves again. Um, anyway, so uh, this is sort of salvaging, getting some, some, at least using the wind normally and not sailing upwind, uh, sail, not sailing uphill. So you turn, trim the sail, look for your next opportunity, and then it's about winding up. Um, so maybe uh, that means healing the boat to, uh, to leeward, ready so that at the right moment you can press it flat and accelerate um, down onto the next wave. Um, maybe it means letting the sail a little bit too far out by the lee and then pulling it back in uh, at the right moment. So that, that preparation ready to catch the next wave. Um, so then there's also a critical moment when you realize that you actually have a wave. Um, so a lot of the time, especially when we're learning to surf, um, you sort of do a mini celebration in your mind and that's great. Like, like, <laughs> uh, congratulate yourself. Um, uh, it feels awesome when you've caught a wave, but, um, uh, what often happens is you catch the wave. So that means that you, uh, accelerated, um, and acceleration, uh, changes the apparent wind angle. Often also you had to turn to get onto the wave. Um, that's, that's usually the best way to catch a wave. Um, so also if you've turned, that also means you have to adjust the trim of your sail. So you really, you might have to change the trim of your sail quite drastically. Um, uh, maybe the boat wants to jibe and there's a critical moment where you can push the sail a little bit out and then it fills really far by the lee and then you can keep sailing. Um, uh, or maybe you don't notice that and the boat accelerates and the apparent wind shifts forward and jibes, jibes the boat. Jibing isn't the end of the world, uh, all the time. Like maybe you jibe and turn it into a roll jibe and stay on the wave. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, you have to, have to trim the sail. Um, cause if, uh, otherwise you catch one wave and then it's start from scratch again. Uh, so, um, as soon as you've caught the wave, get the sail working again, um, and then, uh, turn towards, um, there's a whole bunch of possible things that you might want to, want to turn towards. Uh, so turning towards catching your next wave, 
Um, so that also requires changing your focus from this one wave to, you know, does this wave get bigger the further left you go and smaller the further right you go? So you might want to turn left. Um, uh, or maybe you're going really fast. You're going faster than the waves and you want to avoid that tall part of the wave and go right. Uh, so thinking about uh, catching the next wave or bailing out. Um, uh, if in order to catch waves, you have to go way out to one side of the uh, race course, uh, as soon as you catch the wave, you want to turn back towards the leeward mark just to cash that speed in. Uh, if you go too far out this way, then you have to go slowly back into the mark uh, uh, the other way with, with no more surfing. Um, so thinking about your destination, um, thinking about catching your next wave, where's the deepest part of the wave trough? Sorry, I'm pointing with my shadow now. Uh, so I'll point with my finger again. Um, and uh, tactics or strategy. When you're going fast, um, uh, you can then maybe break an overlap. Uh, maybe uh, you want to think about um, going across the waves first and then surfing into the mark um, is often a, a powerful move. So don't just surf because you can surf. Like maybe you save that up for later. Um, or maybe your, your tactic is a gust. Um, so uh, you catch a wave and then maybe you turn further away from the mark, but it's to get into some wind that will then take you back down towards the mark. Um, so all this requires being able to uh, um, adjust your focus um, from catching the wave to the broader picture of what's going on. Um, other things, after you've caught a wave, trimmed the sail, turned in the best direction to keep surfing. Uh, for example, like don't, don't sail into the wave in front of you. Uh, so that's really slow. Might take a bunch of more waves before you can get surfing again. Um, or maybe as soon as you catch the wave, that's when you jibe. In very windy, very heavy wind, it's nice to be a little bit back on the wave. So I'll maybe exa exaggerate and draw this. Um, so if you've got a big wave here and uh, your boat is here, um, this is a really nice um, place to jibe. Because when you uh, jibe and the sail fills again, you accelerate forward. Uh, and then you still have time to turn before hitting the next wave. Um, whereas if your boat is here on the wave, and these are big waves, if you jibe, that impact power is going to drive you into the next, uh, into the next wave. Um, and this is obviously true, true in smaller, um, uh, in smaller waves as well. Not just these gigantic swell that I've drawn. Um, yes, uh, the other one is around the windward mark. Uh, if you can catch a wave, um, and, and once the boat commits to catching that wave, then you come forward, release the Cunningham out, haul, fine tune the Vang centerboard up, and then get back in the boat again to rebalance it. Um, so, uh, or if you're realizing that your kicker is the wrong tension and it's very windy, um, a time when you could dare to adjust the, um, the sail controls might be when the sail's a little bit less loaded up because the boat's going fast because you've caught a wave. Um, so you often think of speed as being dangerous, but actually the faster the boat's going, the less load there is, the less hard, um, the wind is pressing against your sail. So that can be an opportunity. Um, and then uh, the light's just in the wrong place that says amount of turn. Um, so uh, the other thing that I want to highlight in this video is the amount of turn that the conditions require or maybe that your skill level requires. Um, so when you're starting out sailing uh, or learning to surf well, <laughs> you may have sailed for a long time, but you're um, just starting out as a, as a wave surfer. Um, big turns are obvious. They're easier to work on. And this is why I'm always getting people to do these, uh, these negative to positive, positive to negative turns to get the idea of unbalancing and rebalancing the boat. Um, but sometimes you have to do big turns because the waves are very steep and short, uh, and you can't spend time going perpendicular to the wave. You have to always be going one way or the other. 
Um, so if you change direction, that has to be a big drastic turn from negative to positive, uh, for example. Um, but usually, so turns, <laughs> I almost said turns are slow. Turns give you an acceleration, but turning too much is really slow, right? If you can achieve this similar speed um, with more subtle turns, this boat is going to be way faster than that boat. Even though this boat is doing very impressive kinetics and very uh, uh, interesting moves and they're dancing in and out of the waves, be better to do smaller moves. Here's a pretty big turn and then a small turn and now it's just he's just going fast and then okay now I need to do a turn but it doesn't do a big turn. Um, uh, so I, I've posted a video, I think this was ages ago, maybe 2012 or something, um, of me sailing it at Wobbleman. And that's a good example of this. Like, to be fair, the waves uh, at Lake Wobbleman were very tight, um, but I was, I was doing way too big turns. Um, uh, anyway, then the, so you could, you, maybe you have to do very big turns in some conditions. Usually you, you want to reduce the turns um, if, if you want to do just the right amount of turns, right? You want to, you want to turn just enough to catch the wave. You don't want to turn for no reason, um, if you're able to catch a wave without turning. And if it's really windy, sometimes you just go back in the boat, harness as much power as you can, and just plow through the, 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 the lowest part of the waves. You get distracted by turning. And when you turn a lot, maybe the sail loads up because you're always on a hot angle. You're always sailing hot by the lee or on a hot reach, like turning a lot. Um, but if you if you start planing, if you get on that on that back planing surface of the laser, um, or many boats have a planing surface at the back, uh, then you can just start planing past waves um, or plane at a similar speed as the waves, but sail less distance because you're just pointed towards the leeward mark. So that's, that could be good if it's really windy. Some uh, downwind surfing technique.